Steve, how's it going? Nice to see you again. This short video is all about macros. First things first, I'm going to drag a wavetable into here. Select that and I'm just going to click Command G to group it or I could right click and group. I'll make that large and if I click on this icon here, this gives me the macros. Click on map and that shows you everything that you can actually map within that instrument. So the same for every instrument in effect within Ableton. So there's a few things you can't because they'll cause problems with CPU or they'll cause clicks and pops, but on the whole, pretty much everything. Unfortunately, not the matrix here, which is a bit of a shame because I'd love to be able to map some of that. One of the great things you can do with macros is map multiple functions to one dial. So if I right click and map that to macro one for the warp and the fold and also for the wave position. Now when you've got map selected you can alter the minimum and maximum positions of those. So I'm going to go for the oscillator wave position minimum up here around the sawtooth and the maximum up here around the square. Now for this effect what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to invert the range which means 100% that side minus 100% the other side so it just swaps everything around so you've got a little bit more versatility there. I'll just change those numbers, change these numbers randomly. And now if I play a note on wavetable, I'm using the push here just to twist the dial. A huge variation what I can do. And you can just play around with these and say, oh, do you know what? I'll do that. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to invert that range. See what happens when I do that. And there's a load of different things you can do with it. So I want to add an effect to that. So I'm just going to go into audio effects. I'm going to drag an echo. Now notice I've dragged that outside the instrument max. So if I click on map, that isn't going to work there. I could right click on echo and group or command G and I've created its own audio effect rack. But if I do that, I can only control either the audio effect rack or the instrument rack. So I'm going to undo that and then I'm just going to drag that into the instrument rack and now I can manipulate all of those features. So macro 2 I'm going to put the dry wet, going to put the feedback and I'm going to put the high pass filter. So in here in the mapping I'm going to put the feedback from there to just over 100%. The high pass we'll put it like that and the dry wet will start off there and we'll make it virtually 100%. So if I go into the dial again, turn it down. Now you can see the high pass there is completely wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the range on that. So it gets fuller as it gets higher. There's a lot of different tricks you can do on that. Um, now I'm going to have a look at something I did for the Lossil video, which is the resonator. So I've already put in a rain sound. And I've pre-mapped some of the resonator's functions. So this is as it is. Now what I'm going to do on this, if I open up the mapping, I've restricted what the dials can do. So if I take that down to, if I wanted an octave range, I could go from F2 to F3. Which is great, I can change that. Now in the second pitch I've got between three and four semitones, so I've either got a minor or a major. And then for the third pitch I've got either the fourth or the fifth. And for the fourth pitch I've got either a whole octave above. So what we can do now with these macro variations is we can actually save that so I can save that variation, rename it with command R to D and then I can create, I want to do an F minor so I'll put the minor as the above octave and we'll change that to F minor so if I can flip between these two things, that's the F minor And I can set up as many of them as I want and I can also record that into arrangement view and change multiple parameters. 
Now that feature for the macro variations is actually enabled in Live 11 feature, but so is the ability to have 16 macros, which I've set to various features of Operator here. So you can see the things with green that I've actually assigned the macros to, and I'm going to click on Randomize. And you can see here if I just put that up there, we get some incredible amount of harmonics on it. Sound. I'm going to save that as one variation. I'm going to save that as well. Now, one thing with Operator when you're playing around, especially when you're adjusting the fine tuning, is it'll go out of tune, so you have to adjust everything. In this patch, I'm playing a C sharp. You can see the fundamental frequency here is actually an A sharp because all the fine tuning messing with each other. And this one is actually a G sharp, so both of them are not in the key that I should be playing in. But they actually do sound nice together. So, for example, I've just put a Valhalla Supermassive on here. If I go from patch to patch. Sounds really, really nice. Anything sounds really, really nice put through the Supermassive. Another thing we can do with macros is the chain select. So if I drag a wavetable into here, I'm going to Command-G to group it. We go into the chain select, and say I've got a sawtooth there. I'm going to put unison on it, whack the amount up, whack the voices up, and I'm going to Command-D to duplicate that. I'm going to change the wave slightly to a square. I'm going to go with a shimmer, whack that up there. And if I go into, click on chain to show the chain list, I'm going to drag them both out to cover the whole thing. And if I go up to the smaller bar at the top, drag one of them one way, one of them the other. Then we open up the macro variations. I'm going to right click and map that to macro one. So what happens now, that chain selector on macro one goes left to right. So if I'm playing, That's morphing between the two things. Another cool thing you can do with chain select is, for example, I'm just going to drag that there, drag the other one there, and I'm going to put this onto number one. I'm going to duplicate this again, and I'm going to put that onto number two. And on this duplicated one, we will put a noise oscillator. And this macro now, now it's obviously going zero to one, two, seven, which is far too big. So we're just going to close the chain select there and we're going to map the chain select to between 0 and 2. But I'll just type that in because it's easier. And now what we have with that macro So if you want to quickly change between a lot of different instrument types mid-track, you can just use that chain selector. If I record that in now, I'll just do one note. And then if we hit A, you'll see that all of those things we can actually modulate now any way we want. So we're free to go into any of those things now and change them slightly. So we get something really like we can create a really morphing change in sound. And we've already got all 16 of those things mapped in there in the automation ready for us to work with. Hopefully this is all helpful and it's got some good stuff in it for you. Um, like, subscribe, all that sort of thing. And I shall hope to see you on Saturday when I'm doing the wavetable video showing you loads of things you can do a wavetable to make a track. Thank you very much. Catch you later.